Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today in this video we're going to do a reaction to what a championship would mean for each remaining NBA team's legacy. Four teams remain. We kind of know what the finals looks like right now. Celtics versus Mavs is the most realistic finals, but you never know. Timberwolves may make some noise and may come back. For more content like this, make sure to like this video and let's see what he has to say. There's only four teams left in the NBA playoffs, so let's discuss what a championship would mean for each remaining franchise. Let's start in the Eastern Conference with the Boston Celtics. The last time the Celtics won a championship was Long all the way back in 2008, ago. which was 16 years ago. While the rosters are completely different, there is a key statistical similarity between that 2008 team and this 2024 team. Mainly, the Celtics clinched the best record in the entire NBA this season, and the last time it happened was, you guessed it, 2008. If you follow the logic here, that was also the last time they won a chip. On an individual level, you can argue of the star players left in the playoffs, Jason Tatum is the most in the hot seat in terms of criticism. Think about it. He's the only superstar remaining who has lost in the he's NBA not a superstar. Finals before. Not and yet. of course is one he lost to Steph Curry back in 2022. His next opponent's core has never even been this deep in the playoffs, so he's highly expected to show up and make it to his second finals, but this does put him in a bit of a catch-22. If he loses this conference finals, he will have no excuse. If he wins this conference finals, he will be expected to make up for what he lost back in 2022. However, if Jason wins and exceeds the criticism, he can finally immortalize himself into Celtics history. And for those thinking he's already in Celtics history, look, when you play in the garden, your fancy PR stats, efficiency stats, scoring stats, save that for Isaiah, a property uh, uh, Isaiah, man. No rings, the only stats that matter in the grand scheme of things for the Celtics is how many banners you can put up in the rafters. For now, Jason Tatum is at zero. But if Jason Tatum gets one ring under his belt, you can finally put him in the conversation for best player on the planet. There would still be much to debate, but you can finally hold that debate. Without it, send him off to Weenie Hut Juniors. As for the franchise as a whole, if we look at total rings since 1973, which was the NBA-ABA merger, aka what many consider more of the quote-unquote modern NBA eras, the Celtics only have six titles since this merger, they are tied at second with the Bulls. If they can get a seventh, they will solidify themselves as a team in second place, putting the Bulls at third. But speaking of second place, if you're a history buff, then the Celtics and Lakers are both tied with 17 chips apiece. Winning this year would put the Celtics back on top and the Lakers in and second. The Warriors at the and third last most. but not least, oh, Al Horford would finally get a ring. This is an NBA veteran that many fans want to see be a champion, regardless if you're rooting for or against the Celtics. It would be really nice to see Al finally get a chip. All right, so just want to pause right there. I'm looking at, you know, what he said. Yeah, Boston, they made the finals. Um, a couple years ago, they lost. They definitely, Jason Tatum has a lot this year to, you know, prove 64-win team. Um, he has to make the finals like he will. He has to win a championship. If he wants to be a superstar, he definitely needs to take those steps. And they haven't had adversity yet. But since they don't have any adversity, you know, when they make the finals and they face the boogeyman team, one of these really good teams, you know, we'll see how they act, man. We'll see how they react. But let's go to Indiana. Moving on, let's discuss the C's opponents, the Indiana Pacers. The last time a sixth seed won an NBA title was all the way Houston back in 1994-95 when the Houston Rockets won it as a sixth seed in the West with a 47 and 35 regular season record. This was well, the lowest seed in one, NBA though. history to win it all. Tyrese the Pacers and can tie one, them man. as another sixth seed to win it all, and guess what? They also have an exact same 47 and 35 regular season record. Imagine that. You know, both being the sixth seed is one thing but the exact same record that is an eyebrow raising coincidence if i've ever seen one while Therese Halliburton is only 24 years old, this team is four wins away from an NBA Finals. This is not an opportunity they want to blow. Hey, the Pacers are three-time ABA Mickey, champions, but, but so I'll far they are zero-time NBA champions. If Tyrese can be the first Pacer to give this franchise an NBA championship ring, you can ink his name as the greatest Pacer of all time. 
Of course, at the time of this recording, that title belongs to Reggie Miller, but if somehow, someway, the Pacers pull through and win it all, no question would Tyrese be seen as the top spot, best of all, for the Pacers franchise, and crazy enough, he's not even in his prime yet. Would Tyrese be seen as the best player on the planet actively? No. Honestly, that would be hard to debate on an individual level, but it wouldn't be crazy not either. All. You could it definitely be. set up the argument for if he does get finals MVP, but there's a debate to be had. Now, best point guard in the game, if he wins a title, uh, yes, that is a very valid statement. Are these the best? It would still require some level of debate. I'd say Luka, but if we talk about make a pure point argument. guard? Also, the Pacers, as an overall franchise, this is an organization that is not a fan of tanking, and because of it, they've spent many years, you could argue even decades, in mediocre purgatory. Very rarely do teams escape mediocre purgatory, so the Pacers best make the most of this opportunity. Because as Kyrie Irving always states, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And speaking of... Oh, that, that, that was his quote? Um, Indiana, they're not going to... They're not gonna like win the series. They're not gonna like make like it's done. Um, they got injured too, so Tyree's got injured. It's just it's just not in the script for them. And speaking of Kyrie Irving, let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks and the Western Conference. There's another old saying that fate loves irony. It would be pretty ironic if Luka Doncic wins a ring this year because Luka is a player who gets flack for voter fatigue, yet he never won anything to begin with. So for him to win True. the most important award that doesn't require votes would be a nice twist to the NBA narrative this season. Earlier this season, Mavs owner Mark Cuban said that Luka Doncic is better than Dirk Nowitzki who many see as the greatest Maverick Maybe. of all time. Cuban Maybe. also said that Dirk would be the first one to tell you that Luke is better. Without a ring, so far that seems like a hot take for a hot headline, as Dirk does have the better legacy. But if Luka wins a ring and wins one this year at the age of 25, the debate for best Maverick of all time will officially be a close call to make. At least right now, you can lean on the fault that Dirk has both a ring, finals MVP, and a regular season MVP, while Luka has none of those as of this upload. But if he knocks two out of the three in this remaining postseason, the debate becomes much more interesting. Kyrie Irving's legacy would also have some all-time changes to it, too. If he wins his second ring, he would go down in history as one of the greatest sidekicks ever. His shot in Side Game kick. 7 of the 2016 yeah, yeah. Finals already kick. puts him in that discussion, but two rings on two different franchises will show that he's truly a versatile player and not a system player. And it's no question that Kyrie already has that, Mamba mentality. For example, so far in his career, Kyrie Irving is 14-0 undefeated in closeout games, the best record in NBA history. Another chip for Uncle Drew would tie him with Dwayne Wade with two Robin rings. Wade has one Batman ring in 2006, and Kyrie would also tie Kevin Durant with two Robin rings. I know he won finals MVP there, but come on, those were Steph Curry's teams. And the Mavericks franchise would win their second ring, their first one all the way back in 2011. Most of all though, Luka Doncic would beat the stat patter allegations, and Kyrie Irving will beat the ball hog allegations. His detractors will say that yes, Luka has a lot of really cool stats, but without the ring, it's all bark and no bite. He could finally add some bike to that bark. What do you think? Uh... <laughs> and last but not least, we have the Timberwolves. I think the the person to gain the most definitely, I believe, would be um, Luca. I think Luca Doncic winning a championship. A lot of people put him in these all time categories already. He hasn't, you know, accomplished anything besides great stats. But if he wins a championship, then hey, you know that we can start. You can start the narratives can get really get nasty. Um, Jason Tatum, you have the most to lose. You need a ring. Jason Tatum needs a ring, but Luke, if you get a ring, man, be dope. All right, Timberwolves. The Timberwolves just passed the hardest part of the playoffs in terms of individual matchups. Of course, there will still be psychological pressure in the deeper rounds, but as far as the X's and O's are concerned, beating the Nuggets was their toughest game plan opponent. This is great news for the franchise, as they now have an amazing opportunity to get the first ring in franchise history. On an individual level, Anthony Edwards gets a lot of Michael Jordan comparisons, but even MJ was 28 years old when he won his first ring. If Anthony Edwards can win a ring this season, he would win one at the age of 22. Ant-Man is on projection to easily be the next face of the NBA, and the timing is nearly perfect. LeBron James has not yet retired, but when he goes, there will be a LeBron-sized hole to fill, just as when Michael Jordan left, there was an MJ-sized hole that LeBron swooped in and claimed the spotlight for. Now, one could argue that Victor Wembanyama will be the one to fill the eventual LeBron-sized hole, 
But until that W in Wembenyama stands for win, we shouldn't be talking about any what-ifs until the W start racking up. For now, he's just a Slenderman mythos. Back to the Timberwolves. Just a few seasons ago, this was a team that seemed to be on the verge of blowing it all up yet again and restarting yeah. from the bottom. Remember, they lost Kevin Garnett all the way back in 2007, and since then, the team had countless of many rebuilds trying to get back to serious playoff contention. They had the Kevin Love era, the Andrew Wiggins plus Cat era, Rough. the awkward Cat plus Jimmy Butler era, Rough. and even the Cat plus Ant-Man era started off rocky. Things eventually fixed themselves when Cat accepted that he's not the number one option and this is technically Ant-Man's team. Plus, we can't forget how Rudy Gobert found his place on this roster, and that's not even bringing up the fact that the GOAT Nas Reed saved his legacy by Nas being Reed. such a good bench player Nas Reed that the ballin'. Timberwolves were able to have a six man of the year and a defensive player of the year in the same season. The last time that happened was in 2001 when the 76ers did it with Aaron McKee and Dikembe Mutombo. But if they can do something the Sixers can't and win it all, that would be extra special. So here's what's on the table for each remaining team's legacy. So looking at that, so Boston, Jason Tatum needs to win a championship for his legacy because they've been cooking him for years. And the Boston Celtics are a team that are historically great. They need a championship because you can't go that many years without winning one. Uh, the Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton would easily be the best Pacer of all time, which would be crazy to do at like his third year there. I don't see that happening right now. Um, Anthony Edwards and Timberwolves, that Michael Jordan comparison narrative would be nasty, but it would be happening. And the Timberwolves will finally get a championship, something that their whole history has never seen. And Luka, um, Luka finally gets to that point too. He gets to win a championship. Those narratives get really nasty, but they'll be very interesting. The best finals definitely is Dallas versus Boston. Um, I think that that's the final. If you want to sell the most tickets, I, I think Anthony Edwards is too young, 22. A little too young for it to really mean something. I feel like I feel like you have to go through a grind. A little go a little go through the grinder a little more before you can get there. But I think Luca versus Jason Tatum. I think that'd be a dope finals. That's what we expect, and so that's what we're gonna see. And we're gonna see who's gonna overcome and who is gonna change NBA history and their legacy forever. But for more reaction videos like this, make sure to like this video to so roll to one thousand subscribers. Um definitely appreciate all the love on the shorts and on the videos. So hey, catch you guys on the next reaction video, and I'm out of here. Peace.